Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my modern C++ series. And today we're going to take a look at an STL algorithm known as iterSwap. Now, in order to look at this, I want to go ahead and first take a look at the basic swap function and then talk about where iterSwap is useful. So let me go ahead and take you back to the Wayback Machine. And this is the Wayback Machine in terms of, well, my career. So the very first question I had on an interview, the very first interview that I had was to write a swap function. So basically what you want is something that looks like this here. Let's just go ahead and say it's a void function here. We'll call it swap. And let's say we're going to constrain ourselves to swapping two integers here. So we need to pass them in, let's say, by reference. Or you could pass them in by pointer if you want here. And we would go ahead and create some temporary here for the type that we're trying to swap, which is an int. And we'd say here's a temp. And we want to go ahead and hold on to a's value somewhere. Again, just to you know make something concrete, let's say a equals 1 and b equals 2 in this example. And then we can assign a now to b's value and b equal to, well, whatever is stored in the temporary value. Okay, and then we could return from this function here. Okay, so this is a valid, or I think it should be a valid swap function. Uh, we can go ahead and write it out here. Um, and then I'll go ahead and show you in the uh, standard template library what this does here. Oops, now let's go ahead and get that whiteboard here. There we are. And uh, let's just write this for the sake of it, just so I can pass my first interview question uh, once again <laughs> and take ourselves back here. And in fact, this is probably a good little like algorithm just to do sometime. Uh, and I'll just put a return there. You don't need the return. Uh, but let's go ahead and do A equals... Uh, one and b equals two. We'll call swap on a and b here. And let's go ahead and write out a. Uh, and let's go ahead and do a. And let's go ahead and do b. And let's go ahead and see if we got that right on our first uh, try here. So I'm going to use C. 23, definitely not needed. We could do this in pretty much any version of C++. Go ahead and compile this. And lo and behold, A is 2 and B is 1. Wow, that feels good to get that right after all these years. <laughs> Anyways, um, so the good news is if we go into our uh, standard uh, algorithms library here, which will go ahead to, to uh, C++ and the algorithms library, and if we go and scroll down for a bit here, there is a whole bunch of swap operations. So, you know, if only I had known all those years that I didn't have to bother to write that swap function, I could have just gone and used swap here. That would have been handy here. So we have swap here. You can see it also handles those edge cases where uh, basically it'll handle any type. So this is a nice sort of generic function to have. And we do things by reference so that we're not making copies when we pass things in. Okay, so that's the that's basic idea. That's what we prototyped or you saw me doing in the first minute of this uh, video here. Um, okay, and of course you could also have things like swapping arrays or even things like swapping uh, ranges here, which is kind of cool here. So again, it's, it's overloaded at a neat uh, function here. Now, the interesting thing, though, that happens is what if we want to actually swap, um, you know, two ranges? Well, we have that available. And what do we want to swap the elements that we're pointing to? So, again, let's go ahead and just kind of advance our example. I'm going to at least start this off by using a vector here. And let's go ahead down and uh, let's go ahead and use uh, or create, rather, a vector. Uh, and I'm just going to use something like this. Um, and with this type of example, let's just go ahead and do uh, odds and evens here. Let's call it v odds, v evens, two, four, six, eight. And let's make this an underscore so we have legal values. Um, and let's see, can I use standard uh, swap on this, v odds and v evens, okay? Um, and let's go ahead and... Uh, let's let's try to print these out just so we're able to uh, print out these ranges here. Uh, I'm going to write a lambda function here just to do something a little bit you know interesting here. Uh, let's see, uh, e short for element here, uh, and then we'll just say for uh, each of the uh, or actually let's just use c for our collection. So for each of the elements in our collection, uh, c here, let's just go ahead and write them out here. 
I'll do C out. Let's write out the element. I'll put a space here and an end line here. I could use print line or something. That's that's not a bad thing to, to start using more as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and do print V odds, print V evens. Uh, and let's see if our swap function, how did it do here? Um, oh, uh, let's see here. Oh, it didn't like uh, this here. That's because that's we should make this auto, so it's a lambda. Um, and it actually did pretty well here, right? We printed out our odds, okay, two, four, six, eight, and then our evens, uh, you know, which start off as two, four, six, eight, are now uh, one, three, five, and seven here, okay? So standard swap does a pretty nice job here, swapping, um, or again, if we take a look at this here, let me go into swap here, um, taking, you know, the first element of, you know, whatever is the underlying array and swapping it, okay? Um, let's go ahead and just take a look here. Um, and you can see that there are a bunch of specializations here already. Uh, let's go ahead and look here for our standard uh, algorithm here for vector. Uh, if I go ahead and look at it here, um, yeah, I think it's just a specialization here. So it'll also take care of basically, you know, making sure that if we have containers, uh, vectors in the specific case that are of different sizes that, yeah, you know, it'll make sure it's swapping all the contents and making sure it's not just like swapping the underlying arrays or whatever. Uh, in fact, uh, just to prove this, let's make our, uh, one of our containers larger here, right? And it'll do the, the right job there. Okay. So a good way to test here. Um, now let's go ahead and say though, that, uh, after I've done this swap, uh, let's, let's swap them back here, just back and forth, back and forth here. Okay. So we still have our odds and our evens here, uh, which we could do here. Um, but let's go ahead and say here that what I want to do is take, uh, let's see, v1 odds iter equals v1 odds iter at the beginning. And let's do the same thing for our evens. And I'm just creating iterators here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and let me make sure I point through the right thing. Odds begin and evens. Uh, begin. These are just V's here. Uh, and I could just call this, let's just call this odds iter and evens iter. Uh, that'll work here. Okay, so I'm just grabbing the first elements here and I want to swap them. Okay, so now let's actually get into our algorithm which we wanted to start with here in the algorithms library, which is iter swap. Uh, let's take a look at it on the full page here. It swaps the values of the elements the given iterators are pointing to. Uh, so effectively, you can imagine we're pointing to something and then we just call a swap individually on that one element. So not the entire range, but again, just one element here. Um, and it looks like we need some sort of forward iterator for each of them, right? So I can point to the right thing. And iter swap just calls the underlying swap function here. Now it's very, being pretty explicit here that it's using the standard library uh, swap. And then because uh, we're pointing using iterators, which are just pointers, uh, then we dereference and again, sort of, uh, uncover the value and do this swap algorithm, right? This, this swap algorithm that I showed you here, exactly that, right? It doesn't need to be anything more, more complicated than that here. Uh, there's a nice example here of selection sort, but let's just go ahead and show you, uh, using iter swap here. Um, but this is, this is kind of nice here. So, um, you know, you can actually just do with the algorithmic building blocks here. This is actually a nice sort of example here. This would be another good like sort of interview question going back to swap to say, okay, now that you've written swap, swap the iterator. And then uh, now that you've written swap the iterator, maybe you can write selection sort, right? And you can do it in a few lines here, right? Just consecutively marching through and picking the minimum element from some iterator as you're going through, right? It's just a few line algorithm. It's actually, again, quite elegant once you start using the STL and the, um, algorithms, or at least think, start thinking about algorithms with these little building blocks. So anyways, let's just go ahead and do a little example here uh, with the swap, iter swap here. Let's get it over here. And again, it's just going to take two of these elements here. Now let, let's go ahead and bump up just to again practice from our beginning. Let's go to the next element here, right? We can increment it here. Uh, and then let's go ahead and do standard iter swap, wherever my odds iter is pointing, or my evens. Uh, iter is pointing, not evens item, evens iter. There we go. 
And let's just swap them here. So I'm expecting three and four to swap here, right? So I shouldn't see uh, all of these uh, in a row here. So let's save. Let's rerun it. And just like that, right, I've swapped four and three, right? I've gone to the beginning of each of my collections by pushing it up one and then swapping those elements or wherever your iterators happen to be pointing. I just did that to make it a more interesting example. Uh, so there you have it. That's a nice little example of iter swap and how to write swap. Uh, and if you can write swap, then you can write iter swap by just dereferencing the elements. And um, well, there you have it. You can pass your interview and then you could write something like selection sort in like three lines of code. So there you have it, a sor short, uh, sweet and simple one. You can find more lessons like this on courses.mshot.io. You can go down to uh, the same series that you're watching if you wanna track your progress. Uh, but let me know if you've used uh, it or swap or if you've preferred this or if you have some other fancy swapping function. I know that folks like to do little like bit manipulation tricks to like swap strings and stuff. But um, you have this in the standard library. Think about it as just another building block, those swap functions that can come in handy. Anyways, folks, thanks for your time and attention. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.